Dear guests, dear panel, welcome to the Priesthood uh, House and our second debate on game culture and games in the public discourse. My name is Pauline Mutsuru and I'm one of the project managers, managers at the Digital Lives Project here at Priesthood. When we started talking about this project a um, little more than a year ago, our point of departure was that we wanted to promote and, and encourage public debate about what is arguably one of the most significant cultural expression in our digital age. We thought it could be interesting to hear from gamers, from journalists, from researchers, and from developers about what games mean to them and how they influence their lives. Which are their favorites and why? How could gaming culture be better and what is potentially problematic about it? So uh, we sent out a call for submissions wanting to assemble a digital anthology uh, with essays from all of you, with the best writing on games in 2016 in Norwegian. Uh, that is still happening, and you should definitely all send uh, your essays. Uh, the deadline is the 15th of April, uh, and please get in touch with any of us if you have any questions. However, we also wanted to create a physical space, and that's where the idea for these, uh, <coughs> these series of panel debates came from. This is, uh, as I mentioned, the second um, in the series. There will be at least two more on the 2nd and on the 30th of March. Uh, they will be about education and games and narrative games, respectively. Uh, but there will be more information as we move closer to the date. I won't talk much about the significance of today's topic because I think it's fairly easy for everyone <coughs> games and gaming. Um, a, large, a large number of the games that we play are related to war, or they are shooters. Uh, the biggest AAA games are typical shooters. Um, and they, they clearly tap into something about today's society. The question is, what could that possibly be? I think we have assembled a very good panel here today, and uh, we'll talk about these topics and hopefully bring some new and interesting viewpoints um, on subjects that can seem well covered, but I think there's definitely more to talk about. <clears throat> so we'll start today's conversation uh, about this war of mine, which has been available to play out in the lobby. Uh, and we'll follow up with a panel debate with all of our four esteemed panelists. And there will be plenty of time to ask questions, so please, please don't be shy. Um, I think I've taken up enough time to talk about the framework. Uh, so uh, I'm going to let Martin introduce our guest of honor, Wojciech Sedlak. Thank you for your attention. Martin, the floor is yours. Hello. Um, uh, do we have sound? Yeah. All right. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to this panel. It's about war and how it is portrayed in video games. Uh, tonight we'll be talking both to researchers who study games and a gamer who has seen war up close. But before we meet our panelists, we have our special guest. He's one of the developers behind this board mine, a game that puts you in the shoes of civilians trying to survive a civil war while facing moral and practical dilemmas. Uh, from 11-Bit Studios in Poland, please welcome Wojtek Setlak. Uh, so, I'm very pleased to be here today with you, and uh, I'm honored to, uh, for a chance to uh, speak about uh, our experiences uh, developing this game. Uh, I was involved in the development process from uh, quite an early moment, but the original idea wasn't, of course, mine. It was uh, actually conceived by uh, the owner of our uh, company, Grzegorz Michowski, uh, who read a uh, very moving account of a survivor of the Siege of Sarajevo during the Bosnian uh, War, and uh, he thought that uh, this is something that uh, can be uh, uh, represented in a game, the experience of the survivors, the day-to-day -day struggle. Uh, and 
I saw the game as a very, very early prototype, uh, which lacked uh, character bios, it lacked events. It was a very simple, uh, simplistic, I would even say, model. It was just uh, basic crafting and uh, exploration of the rooms uh, with the three characters. And I had the same reaction as every one of uh, our team. This is something that we want to make. This is something that we want to experience. This is something unique. And that's the reason why we made this game. We, we felt that it's time to make a different game about war. So uh, I think maybe we should, for the people who have not seen the game, perhaps we should give a short demonstration of uh, the little ones, which is the console version. Yeah, of course. Uh, so maybe I should hold the microphone yeah. and you at the controllers over here. So um, you can kind of take us through the uh, the mechanics of the game. So will I be helping? Yeah. No, if you if you, if you, or, no, you yeah. I will be able to explain what what's going on. This is the PS4 version, which was released uh, very recently, and this is essentially uh, this was mine uh, with added children. <coughs> the addition of children to such a game was not a decision we made lightly. Uh, initially, uh, the idea was uh, next. We didn't want to uh, see children in such a situation. Uh, it was something that uh, we considered too taxing for the players, but the reaction of the player community and the press uh, to this war of mine was uh, overwhelmingly positive, and we decided that we can do it. It will be difficult, but it can be done right. So what are we seeing here? So, this is the initial scene. Uh, we have uh, several survivors and the ruined house uh, that we have to uh, explore and find uh, something that will help us survive. Uh, the children are not uh, uh, the part of uh, our little community from the start. Uh, it can happen uh, after several uh, playthroughs uh, because uh, we have to uh, take care uh, about when we have to uh, uh, fulfill their needs, and it's uh, just something that for the fresh player is too difficult. Uh, because, uh, as you see, the game begins without any introduction, uh, almost no introduction, no tutorial, and uh, no other goal than to survive. Uh, we don't know how long. Uh, well, why is there no tutorial? Uh, there is no tutorial because when the war break breaks out, you don't get a crash course in survival in the world. <laughs> and we don't know how long we will have to survive because actually people in the war zone don't have an idea when will the war end. Uh, if we manage to build a radio, we will be able to uh, listen to the uh, radio stations and perhaps uh, hear about the UN resolution that uh, gives us hope that the peacekeeping troops will arrive. Well, we can't build anything. We don't have any components to start with. Uh, so, uh, after some time, we can uh, we can uh, have some hope that we some idea when will this. Uh, ordeal end. But initially, this is something we can just hope for to end quickly. So we search the rubble, search the ruins, the abandoned uh, house. There are piles, piles of uh, rubble everywhere. Some doors are locked. We can we can try to get through this rubble, but it takes about two hours. So uh, I will switch to another uh, another civilian. 
and these people help each other find something useful elsewhere. This way is also blocked. Oh yeah, this is the fridge, it's empty. <coughs> Initially we don't have anything, n nothing to eat, nothing to uh, use. Uh, during the first day we have to just uh, search the house and check if... So as the, as the game progresses, what kind of challenges are uh, these survivors going to face? Uh, when the day ends, you will see that we will be uh, able to send someone to search the neighborhood uh, and perhaps find something useful. But the main challenges uh, are starvation, uh, sickness, and unfortunately other people. Because uh, we can uh, encounter uh, other uh, civilians who are trying to do the same thing as we do, which is survive. Uh, but uh, we can also encounter uh, people who took the easy way. Uh, because it turns out that in times such as this, uh, the easiest strategy for survival is destroying others, taking taking uh, what they manage to gather. And uh, we will encounter such people in, in our game. Can you do it yourself? We can also stumble upon uh, the uh, soldiers, the military, which is uh, after <coughs> two and a half years of conflict is demoralized and uh, dangerous. But uh, sometimes we uh, happen upon uh, people who can help us. Uh, people who, uh, who, who uh, don't want uh, to rob us, they don't, they don't want to uh, trade with us, they, but uh, sometimes they want our help and they will uh, respond in kind, but sometimes uh, neighbors show up uh, on our doorstep and preparing gifts. It's, uh, it doesn't happen very often, because everyone is uh, in the same situation, but it does happen. We can craft a shovel. Whose face is this? Pardon? Uh, whose face is it? The, the face on the picture. Oh, no, it's, it's actually my, my friend, uh, he's a graphic artist, but uh, uh, I also, uh, uh, we used, uh, uh, we wanted to give uh, this game a sort of um, realistic feel, and we didn't want it to employ models uh, and actors, so we just, uh, and this game is something personal for us. So we just uh, used uh, our friends and uh, colleagues and, and uh, every, almost everyone who was on the team in figures in the game as one of the characters, uh, main or, or secondary. Uh, the most difficult decision was uh, whether to uh, let our children star in this game, I decided against it, against it uh, which they will hate me for probably someday. <laughs> uh, but uh, it was a difficult decision for me and other members of the team chose otherwise. So we have now this shovel, so we can all but Katia managed to get through this door, uh, through this uh, pile of rubble with her bare hands. She's a journalist. Uh, she returned... Uh, oh, the night started. So, we have to choose who will do what. Uh, of them all. Uh, Katya is slightly sick, so we will let them her sleep. Uh, Pavle has uh, 12 places in his backpack, so he will go to scavenge. And Bruno is a good cook, but he doesn't have anything to cook and anything 
to cook all. So with his, he will stand guard. Actually, at this moment, I could let them just uh, both sleep uh, while uh, Pavle goes to scavenge because I know that the first night will be a calm one. <laughs> but this is the only moment when I can be uh, sure that no one will try to rob us in the night. So I won't take advantage of this. Uh, so let's prepare. I can take a shovel with me in case we encounter any hostile piles of rubble. Uh, all right, that's it. Unfortunately, uh, the game is uh, this. This game is uh, uh, the PS4 version, the little ones. Uh, uh, figures uh, it starts children in heavily. But there are no children yet, as I said, and we don't know when uh, one of them will show on our doorstep. Uh, well, oh, those red circles that you have seen, those are sources of um, sound. So I can uh, see that something is moving on the upper floor, but I know that those are just rats. But, uh, uh, in most places, the, uh, the source of the sound will be other people who uh, don't have to be friendly at all. Let's uh, let's peek to the hall. Nobody's there. So, unfortunately, it's locked. So, let's see. At this early stage of the game, uh, the most important decision uh, for the players is what to take. And uh, most players uh, who are accustomed to playing uh, war, other war games uh, will prioritize weapons, weapon parts of weapons, which are useless at this stage. Of course, it would be nice to have a weapon to defend uh, our home, but uh, we don't have the ammunition, we don't have uh, the means to repair broken weapons. We need to, uh, we need to uh, take care, uh, first and foremost, uh, about the health of, of our civilians, about the, their safety. So we have to reinforce the uh, shelter. As you can see, I stumbled upon a, a toy. It will be essential later when the children will join our little team. They will need uh, a way to keep uh, their spirits up. And the toys, the toys uh, are an obvious choice. We will uh, be able to build uh, some uh, more uh, uh, things for the entertainment of children. Uh, and of course, the, the medicine. The medicine is essential uh, because uh, there is no medical help uh, available. There is a hospital in the city, fictional city of Pogorin, but uh, it can uh, help uh, our uh, civilians only when they are very badly hurt or <coughs> ill because it's uh, understaffed and under equipped, uh, under supplied. We can, of course, also go there and uh, rob them. We can uh, go to the hospital and donate some of our supplies. Um, the choices we make will uh, be uh, reflected not in uh, um, some abstract numbers or, or uh, some rating of our goodness or badness. Uh, but our our sur survivors, our civilians, will react to our choices in uh, uh, their own ways. So I think I will take the bottle of uh, pills. I will leave other things for now because I know that I will be able to return. Uh, oh, that's not what I did. Uh, I will be able to return he here uh, at a later uh, moment. 
and I, I have to prioritize the uh, building uh, blocks, so to say. Uh, so, and we of course need food to survive. And there is some food and some water because we don't, we can't cook without water. And uh, the water mine, mines are are really shut, so all, all the water we uh, uh, have to find somewhere, or uh, we'll be able to build a rainwater collector later. So the backpack is full. We start to head back. Uh, so I run to exit. Uh, gameplay loop and then the game goes on like this for how many days? How many days uh, does the uh, gameplay uh, mm. Well, uh, the length of uh, each, uh, uh, each uh, game, uh, the number of days uh, after which the war will end is chosen uh, randomly and it can vary from about a month to about two months, but we uh, well, it, it's not actually a, a pure random number because it's uh, there are different uh, scenarios that can be uh, launched when we are uh, launching the game, and if we manage to complete the game, uh, the range of s uh, possible scenarios is, uh, increases, so we can get uh, different different uh, uh, civilians to start with. We can uh, start in the winter, uh, and the more times we manage to complete the game, the more difficult uh, will be the scenarios. But of course we can uh, elect to, uh, to play one of the easier ones. So, so um, I thought maybe we could talk a bit about the setting, because it's... Um, uh, yeah, we can just put down the controller and. Uh, oh, oops. <laughs> I managed mean, to fast forward to another, right? So, uh, well, should we continue the it. presentation? No, I, I, uh, well, I think we so, can uh, have a seat and have a little talk. So, is, what I'm wondering is how, how do you, I mean, this is a game about uh, being a civilian during war. How do people. React to this game. I mean, it's uh, it came out in 2014, the original game, and now on Friday you're releasing uh, this version. Yeah. So, so what, what are the reactions you're getting? Well, uh, when we were uh, preparing the original release of this War of Mine, uh, we uh, of course we have uh, first uh, we play tested it. We uh, invited some of our trusted uh, testers to, uh, to, to, to play it, uh, and with, uh, then we uh, gave uh, the beta uh, version, the unfinished version, uh, which was a bit buggy and had a lot of uh, 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 spelling errors and so on, we gave it to the journalists, and with each stage we uh, gained an increased uh, confidence that we got a right, a right game. That's something that people wanted because uh, uh, almost everyone uh, got the message we wanted to convey, uh, which is that uh, in war not everyone is a soldier. And uh, but, uh, uh, I would like to quote one of the reviewers that the war ends not when the bad guy uh, catches a bullet through his brainstem, but when the people uh, get to go home. Uh, so uh, uh, we had an overwhelmingly positive reaction. 
and uh, of course uh, the gaming press uh, uh, was also very supportive. They of course found a lot of to uh, a lot uh, of elements that could be improved upon. Uh, some uh, were uh, pointing out that the characters are, are a bit uh, undeveloped, which was uh, deliberate on our part because we wanted uh, to actually wanted to players to invest uh, uh, emotionally into the characters and we wanted the real stories of those characters to be the stories that are written during the game. Uh, what has happened to them uh, during the, uh, the war. Uh, so they are uh, just, a, just uh, a couple of sketches, uh, just to show their personalities. Uh, the players, uh, you know, if you compare the critical uh, score uh, on Metacritic, it's 83. If you check the review, reviews on Steam, there are over 14,000 uh, 14, reviews for this war of mine. It, they are something like 98% positive. It's, it's a really uh, rare uh, achievement. But uh, the players have uh, had uh, their complaints too. For example, uh, many players complained that the um, uh, fights are uh, the, the control during the fights is awkward. That, that fights are messy. That they don't feel in control, and this is something that uh, actually is deliberate. The control scheme is the same throughout the whole game. You don't control your character directly. You have to show them where to go, what to do. If you want them to perform a certain action, you need to click or tap an icon. This sucks during combat and we are aware of that but how else to convey the fact that those people are not fighters they don't know how to fight the players know everything about how to fight in a computer game we wanted to um, uh, sort of push them out of the comfort zone and we succeeded <laughs> judging by the uh, amount of complaints uh, <laughs> uh, so, there is a certain character who can uh, fight very efficiently if we utilize the environment, uh, if we attack from the back, if we hide in the doorways which are provided for the purpose. But uh, other than that, those <coughs> are people who never expected to be required to fight for their lives. How uh, could they uh, feel comfortable in this role? So, uh, we decided, as you see, to something that is uh, anathema to uh, game designers. We decided to uh, uh, remove uh, uh, the ability uh, to uh, affect the ability of players to control their characters. We decided to diminish the agency that players have, because players usually want to be in charge. They want to control everything to be the masters of the game and uh, this world of mine is a very dif difficult game to master and there are some uh, developments that are out of the... Uh, they can be uh, influenced by the player. Uh, so, of course players from found, uh, have found ways to uh, uh, beat the game, so to say. Uh, they always do, but uh, uh, if you don't go looking uh, uh, at the game forums, um, this world mine remains uh, a punishing experience for the first several playthroughs. So, so uh, despite despite all that, we uh, got very little uh, complaints. It was all, you know, this is a great game, but I wish something. Some players said that, but I wish it would uh, last longer. But does it affect the players in any way? I mean, is it just another game, or do, do have you had any people tell you they get emotionally invested or yeah. learn more about yeah. the world? Or yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, 
when, of course, for the first months, we were uh, very uh, eagerly scanning the internet for uh, all the critical voices and reviews and, and opinions. We, we've read the forums. Uh, the ones that affected uh, us most were the opinions of people who actually survived the siege of Sarajevo. And uh, uh, one of uh, those people uh, complained that um, the social social order in Sarajevo didn't, didn't uh, broke down completely as it is in our fictional setting, in our fictional city of Bogorin. This, uh, which is right, but we wanted to create a worst case scenario, which is where the, the civil war uh, that is fought across the city, uh, this is the last outpost uh, after uh, after several years of war, the, the rebels are reduced to the, only to the, one city. So uh, there is no authority. Uh, formally, the, the rebel militias are uh, in charge, but they can't uh, really enforce anything. So the social order uh, breaks down, and we can count now not on the uh, authorities, uh, but uh, only on our neighbors from time to time. Uh, uh, and but uh, so uh, another opinion from another survivor of the siege of Sarajevo was of a. Uh, one who was a little girl during the siege, and she said something that uh, I, uh, we, we take as the highest compliment. She said that there must have been someone on the uh, development team who lived through this, because it's impossible that... Uh, well, actually, none of us... Uh, we are lucky, and none of uh, us had to live through something like that. Uh, and she uh, wrote in her review that uh, it, rem it brought back her memories, uh, that how she begged her mother not to go to fetch provisions, uh, to let the granny go instead, because she was afraid that uh, she would be shot by a sniper. And, uh, well... Uh, <coughs> It's uh, n not often something like that uh, is, uh, is said about a game. You've uh, <coughs> done uh, extensive research, uh, both writing the scenarios and the background story for the game. Can you tell us a bit about that research? I know, for instance, you uh, um, you read about this uh, South American uh, city at one point. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, when I created uh, the background story for the game, the story is uh, almost completely invisible in game, but it served to us as a guide, an important guide, uh, uh, so we can decide it. Uh, which uh, scenarios were plausible and, and which were uh, improbable in, in this setting. So uh, I had developed the story from that, that the roots of the conflict uh, of in this fictional setting run to the 16th century, because uh, when there is blood on both sides, it usually means that the, uh, the roots are deep. And uh, one of the most... Uh, uh, when I was writing the story, I needed to uh, kind of root every part of it in reality. So, uh, as I developed the story, I uh, researched, researched uh, I searched for similar occurrences in the history of human conflict. And there was this, during this research, I, I stumbled upon the, um, the, the massacre in El Monsate in uh, El Salvador, and this is a, a place where uh, it was a battalion, uh, it, it was in government forces, not, not right-wing militias, so, as I misremembered. It was a battalion uh, called uh, Alta Clan or something like that, uh, killed off uh, an entire village 
because they suspected them of uh, helping the uh, uh, left-wing uh, uh, militias, which was not true because this was uh, this was a rather conservative tradition. If anything, they uh, all they did they sold some food to some guys who turned out to be from the other side. And there was only one survivor, a woman who lost four children. And uh, this story was, uh, for a while, it was on the first pages. Uh, I think it was the New York Times who broke the story. And it happened uh, in 1980, 1980, I think, not so long ago. And, uh, you know, I, I researched, uh, in my research, I read a lot of uh, testimonials uh, and, uh, of, uh, and interviews with people who survived the Warsaw Uprising, the second Warsaw Uprising in 1944, uh, which lasted for 83 days, and uh, in which about 200,000 people lost their lives in the bombardments. And, but, but this was the Second World, World War, and the time when the Holocaust puts all the other atrocities uh, into a kind of diminished scale. And the massacre at El Mozarte was like, well, I was alive at the time. I was 11 years old. And I haven't heard about it until I started researching. Uh, and uh, it has turned out that whatever I imagined, whatever turn of events I wanted to put into this the story, uh, I had no trouble finding uh, uh, exam examples from the actual uh, history of human conflict. So how does that, I mean, uh, several people on your team have been uh, digging into kind of the worst things that have happened in human history. Uh, how does that affect you uh, in, your, in your daily lives? Uh, the research? Or? Yeah, doing all this. Well, actually, after I finished researching and writing the story, I had to take a break from it because I, I needed to recover. Uh, it, uh, it, well, I don't encourage anybody to to dive into this too deeply because um, it's, it's, it's an endless source of, of uh, uh, suffering. Uh, I mean, uh, we kind of should have expected that, but uh, I, I was, uh, well, it's another thing to kind of uh, abstractly know that people can do terrible things to each other to, uh, and to read about the Holocaust and, uh, and all the other atrocities and, uh, uh, and uh, it, it was an, another experience uh, much more taxing for me to learn that such things still happen all around the world in many places and not, not much is heard about it. Um, so, um, although you're trying to show some of the atrocities and the hardship that civilians face in wartime. Uh, you've drawn some lines. As you said, you don't allow children to die in this game. And, uh, <coughs> and also you don't uh, show any rapes or anything like this. Uh, how, how did you come to those decisions that we will not show this? Uh we had to consider uh, that we are creating something that we want people to experience. Uh, so we had to balance uh, the, well, the enjoyment isn't perhaps the right word, but we had to balance the will of the players to go on, to carry on, to experience another day, to, to hope for another day, with uh, things that we um, uh, we force them to uh, go through. So there is, for example, uh, a scene uh, in the game where uh, we stumble upon a soldier who is assaulting a girl, girl, and 
he is leading her somewhere, and it, it's very clear from the context what will happen next. But we uh, didn't want it to show this. Mm, we show, and actually we can, uh, uh, we let players participate in murdering someone with an, a hatchet. And uh, we had to draw the line not to lose the players. Uh, because this is something uh, 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 this is something that uh, a lot uh, rape is something that a lot of our players uh, might experience because uh, about uh, in this war of mine the, the balance of the sexes is very equal almost uh, 50% of the players uh, when we checked it was about two months after the game release uh, were uh, women. Uh, and similarly, uh, uh, we in decided to include the children in the game because the players uh, shown, have shown us that this, is, uh, this kind of game is something that they want to experience. Uh, and uh, kids dying, is, it, it's a part of every conflict because they don't take part in uh, the uh, in fight, but they die of centuria as uh, the son of one uh, of Boris, one of the characters uh, in his... Um, and we can learn about it from his uh, bio. Uh, they can die of many other illnesses, they can die of malnutrition, uh, they can die of a stray bullet. They, they still uh, play in the playgrounds and die from uh, uh, mortar rounds. Uh, but we don't have to uh, show the death of a child to, to convey the message that war is a terrible time for everyone involved, and especially for the children. Uh, we didn't want it to overtax the players. They have enough to deal with as it is. And uh, so the worst thing that can happen to a child in this war of mind, the little ones, is that it uh, decides to abandon us, to run away in the night. And after the game concludes, we learn that she or he was picked up by the, something, a humanitarian organization or, or some kind strangers. Uh, so, in a way, we can say that it was a practical consideration, because we didn't want it to shock the players. We wanted them to experience this, if possible, to the end. And uh, we had to balance the costs, emotional costs. Thank you. So, um, uh, are there any questions for Wojtek? And you can just raise your hands if you have any. And there is a mic. Right there. Hello, uh, my name is Elia Feste. Uh, I was wondering, uh, now that you launched, uh, you launched the version with the children in it, uh, have you seen uh, afterwards that you could have gone further in what you show, to show more of the atrocities? Uh, could you repeat the end of the Have I seen what? If you could show more of the bad things that happen in war, um, now the experience you, you have after you've launched it with the children, do you think that you well, could have gone further? It's launching Friday. Okay, okay, sorry. So, um, <laughs> sorry to shoot down my question. Um, yeah, did you have another question, Chris, or anyone else? Uh, yeah. <coughs> you have your own mic. I found it up Hi, my name is Christina. Uh, I think it's very, very interesting what you're t saying about not taxing the player too much with a game being something that you kind of have to want to play it. And as humans, we don't necessarily seek out to feel like shit. We usually only do it when we get paid or we have to. So I was wondering. How did you find that balance? Was it how did you do play testing and to to find that balance between wanting to experience something painful and still go on? How did you find that balance? Because I think it's probably one of the hardest to strike in a game that you that want to deal with something that's challenging. 
Well, um, uh, actually, uh, in the case of uh, those two uh, decisions I was talking about, we uh, uh, arrived at the decision kind of arbitrarily. We didn't made a game in which a rape scene is acted out. We didn't made a game in which children can die on our eyes. We just decided that we won't show this. But we are uh, actually uh, a long, uh, a, a lot of man hours went into playtesting and uh, a very important factor was how long people people uh, are able to play the game because uh, uh, well the finished version is uh, a bit easier than well maybe not a bit uh, uh, quite a bit easier than uh, than the version i was playtesting and i had to uh, stop every uh, after about one to one and a half hours because I was exhausted and now I can play for longer stretches of course it depends on the situation of the game if we are lucky or then we uh, and the spirits are higher of our little team we can play for longer but even 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 if everything goes smoothly well, we managed to create a game that quickly drains the uh, emotional resources of the players. And the main consideration was uh, to that the majority of players can can uh, at least play for like seven days, uh, in-game days uh, and nights in a row, because they need to have some perspective. They need to have to feel the the uh, continuity. So they, after they return to the game, they uh, kind of have some, some remember uh, the direction they were uh, developing the the uh, shelter in. Other questions? This uh, may be a completely irrelevant question, but uh, I tested the game uh, earlier on and uh, also on it a bit. And in many games with a strategy element like this, you play the role of a manager of sorts, a football team manager, a general. And it seemed to me that this was not an aspect in this game. There was no hier hierarchy, there was no structured chain of command with the survivors. Was this um, intentional? Because uh, this seems that the game didn't really have one single main character. That sort of the group was the main character, if you, if you understand. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I don't think I, I've heard you right. Because uh, is saying like the group is the main, is the group the main character, and if so is that oh, intentional, like that I see. hierarchy. Uh, so the group. Uh, the group of survivors. Uh, well, uh, it's a difficult question because, uh, on the one hand, we uh, uh, we want the player to get attached to the characters. Uh, they have uh, to uh, kind of uh, identify with them, uh, with them all. Uh, but it is entirely possible, and it happened to me that I managed to survive, but uh, the team that has survived the war uh, was composed of completely different people, because everyone on the original team has died. Uh, so it's hard to say, well, uh, we get attached to the uh, characters as we play, but uh, 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 it can happen that uh, uh, None of the original characters survive, so in a way, that the group is the, the, he, the hero. Uh, but it, it's hard to identify emotionally with a group. So, in this case, it, it was uh, well, the player or me in this case was uh, developing a rapport with each individual character who came to the shelter, uh, and uh, and I was of course uh, uh, mourning. Uh, uh, each uh, character who 
who uh, fell or who died of, of uh, illness and, and so on. And so, so it's it's difficult to. I don't think it it, it, it it's a question that that has an either or answer. I think both our characters are the heroes of the story and, and the whole group. Also, there's not a clear leader in the group. Was that also intentional? There is no clear leader. There's no clear leader. There's no oh, boss yeah, in the group. Absolutely, this is this is absolutely intentional. Uh, we didn't want uh, a, a single lead, so to say. Uh, first, because uh, because. We wanted to emphasize the fact that this is a uh, quite a random uh, assortment of people. It, it's not a family where we, uh, which develops usually uh, uh, some kind of order. So, uh, in a way, uh, the leader of the group is the player, but he's not. Uh, he's absent from the game. Uh, so. Uh, so no, if if we have included a, a lead, uh, then uh, we would have to make the game the whole game differently, and we we didn't want to emphasize anyone uh, among the others. And uh, I know that some players perceive their group as as a team, which has uh, essential members, it has its uh, dead weights. It has a leader, uh, someone who is uh, indispensable. Uh, it is often the best scavenger or the best fighter. It, it depends on the on the playing strategy. Uh, but but this is this is how players want to uh, uh, kind of uh, develop their own story. We wanted to leave them uh, as much agency as we uh, can. Uh, because uh, we were diminishing it already, and that's uh, that's something that play that players hate. All right. So uh, it's great to have you with us. We are going to be talking more about this war of mine. But now we're going to bring up our other panelists.